Let's face it. As consumers, we don't know what we don't know. Finances are an intricate puzzle. If you miss even one small piece, it can make a big difference and become out of focus. Welcome to Your Finances, Know You Can with Wesley Forster, President and Senior Financial Strategist at HSI Financial Group. In this podcast, Wes and his dedicated team of financial professionals provide the guidance you need to build your ideal financial lifestyle and reach your goals. Stop flushing money down the drain and losing it needlessly and unnecessarily. Join in as Wes empowers you to arrive at your destination and swap uncertainty for confidence and choose where you want to go. Now, on to the show. When dealing with financial institutions, bigger is not always better. And Andrew Oziak can attest to that. Andrew is a financial strategist at HSI, and he talks about his experience working at one of Canada's largest financial institutions versus his tenure at HSI. Andrew and Wes Forster will discuss what the big guys miss and what you can do about it. Gentlemen. Andrew. Hey, Wes. So... Why don't you just give us a little bit of more, a little more background then on, on your uh, experience. So what, what your titles were and how many mm-hmm. years you were with the, the bank. Yeah. So uh, I was with the bank for about seven and a half years, um, had a variety of roles. I think actually five different roles in that, um, that time frame. I was a, started as a teller, moved on to a personal banking role where I did a bit of lending and investing for clients. Uh, then I moved into management for for a couple of years there. I was a client service manager as well as a a branch manager, which was you know good to gain some experience and see all different kind of angles of the bank and how they kind of work together and stuff like that. And um, you know dealt with a lot more client situations and issues and and things like that as well. And, and then I finally finished my banking career um, as a business banker, um, which was where I met Wes and you know learned about some of the business side of the bank as well, and eventually transferred over to. Uh, HSI financial. Perfect. And of course, I think that, uh, I don't know if we talked about your story before, but yeah, you were our representative at the bank for, for some time. And what we found that was really interesting because the bank isn't as personable as they used to be. You don't usually get the, you don't get a hold of the, the person that you have your relationship. In fact, I think that's pretty deliberate too, by the bank. Uh, you don't get a hold of that person. Uh, they want you to do pretty much everything. Uh, for yourself now, uh, if you can do it for yourself online or ATM or that's what they want you doing, right? Mm-hmm. And so what we found was refreshing with Andrew is that that uh, he got back to us. We'd phone, we'd actually have his his number, and we would phone his number, and we get him or his, get his voicemail uh, greeting, and uh, and he would get back to us and take care of things for us. So when it came time, we had to replace somebody in our office. Uh, Warren and I had that discussion and, and we said, I said to Warren, I said, I wonder, maybe we should talk to Andrew over at the bank and, and see if he wanted to join us. And, uh, that's where it all began. And it's been a pretty good relationship. We've had some fun in in the time that he's been here now, but why don't you go ahead, uh, Andrew, and, and tell us a little bit about the differences, uh, what you see that you were guided by the bank to do for, for clients. Uh, we know that the banks uh, in Canada, especially, but in the United States too, that they spend an awful lot of money on advertising and it's not always as advertised. Maybe you can share a little bit about that. So my time at um, the bank was valuable. You know, I met some good people and they helped me along the way. Um, but I just, even working there, I didn't know what needed to be, what needed to go into different things, like whether it's a financial plan or what kind of information I'm even just gathering from a client, for, whether it's for a loan or you know, even as simple as opening a bank account. And, you know, I think one of the big things is that the bank doesn't really set up the employees for um, success. There's a lot, there, there's a lot expected out of them, such as, you know, dealing with this, uh, you know, a large number of clients, which I'm sure, you know, Wes was aware of as he's probably had multiple business bankers throughout his time with HSI. And there is a lot of turnover. Um, and I think that is one of the biggest things is that if they are, there is a, um, a lot expected out of, out of one staff member dealing with a number of clients, um, which I think right there is one of the biggest differences with HSI is that you have, there's a team here and the team is always available and you're always going to get them when you call into, to, to our office. Right. And it's not 
an individual client. It's not Wes's client. It's not my client. It's HSI's client. And we all know what is going on in the office for every, every one of our clients, which makes it easier for them when they do call in for sure, or when they need assistance with something. And I'll, I'll interject there. And that's the, that's what you're, you're speaking of in terms of the team is that somebody that I'm dealing with that I've been dealing with say 20 years. No, Andrew is involved with that client. And because of the, the detailed notes and, and the fact finders that we do, uh, Andrew will know what needs to be done with that client. He's part of those team meetings. So when, I, when, when the client phones into HSI, if Wes isn't there, and, and, and I think this is another thing you brought up too. I, I like to Andrew at the bank, you're getting the voice message greeting. You don't know who mm-hmm. you're going to talk to. You're going to probably have to educate them on, on, uh, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And you're gonna have to give them your pin number and you're gonna have to give them your firstborns, uh, or your, or your next born's birth date. And who knows mm-hmm. what else, the social insurance number for them, which mm-hmm. they don't have because they haven't been born yet. Uh, I'm kind of picking on them a little bit, but we all know, we all have had this experience and it's really annoying. Whereas you phone into HSI and, and, uh, you're going to get a live person picking up the phone. Mm-hmm. Rarely are you going to be talking to a, 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 a voicemail greeting. Uh, it, it does happen, but that is a rare event because it's, it's a bit of one of my pet peeves, uh, pick up the phone on the second ring or better. And, mm-hmm. you know, let's, let's make sure that we're taking care of that person as quickly as we most possibly can. And that if we have to return a call that, that they, they know when that call is going to be returned, uh, come hell or high water kind of thing. But there was another thing that you mentioned to me too, when it comes to financial planning, what kind of a financial plan, how, how, how can you compare a financial plan that they do at the bank or claim to do at the bank to what we do? Absolutely. The claim of, of a financial plan is a good way to, way to put it. And, you know, I've seen it here, even with, you know, new clients we having have come in the office and they, we suggest, you know, bring in your financial plan with your current advisor or banker, and we can take a look at that. Right. And what does that end up being is it's an investment statement or a one sheet with a graph on it or something like that, claiming that that's a, a financial plan, which I very well know now that that is not the case. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, investments are a big part of it for sure. And, you know, the, you know, everyone wants their big returns and things like that, but there's, I'm sure as you've, as you've mentioned on this podcast is there's tax planning, there's estate planning, making sure that accountants and lawyers are all talking together and that we do have someone that there is a person in your life managing all of that. And I think seeing that now it's like, yeah, there wasn't much planning being done there. Yeah. Maybe they're investing money and, and, uh, things like that. But, uh, as far as the full picture, um, definitely seeing a difference here mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing. And I, and, you know, I, th- I think what's really unfortunate is a lot of people, what, what uh, Andrew is, I think is saying here is that there's a lot of people that work for the bank and banks in general, but for this particular bank that we're referring to that they're good people, they're clever, you know, they, they deserve to learn how to do things the right way they want. They, because they're the, the, the people I run into the bank that they mean, well, they want to do the job, but their hands are tied there's a certain level of like what Andrew's saying is there's a certain level of expectations. So it's tough to deliver. Right. And, and yeah, yeah, for sure. And just to kind of follow up on that is, you know, there's always levels of approvals and hierarchies at the bank, right? If you need to get something, there's always some, something that needs to be approved, you know, by a, someone higher up And here it's, you know, we have Wes and we have us and we talk about it and things, you know, get done. Right. So there's not that delay, when they're, you know, especially when there's, you know, a lot of that lending stuff and, um, you know, different rates on whatever you're looking to do there, there's always like this delay because of those types of approval processes, you know, that are kind of eliminated or not, you know, not eliminated, but fully or not eliminated, I guess, but, you know, kind of reduced with HSI for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then another thing you mentioned to me too, is that, that, and we, you know, if you're, if you've been around a long time, you realize, you know, this, I, I mean, I know that it, we're not telling stories out of school here or anything, you, you know, it. but if you, if you're, you've got the blinders on. So if you're a consumer and you have the blinders on and you think that you're being taken care of, that's a most unfortunate situation that you're in because you're probably missing an awful lot. You're missing out you're, you're, you're what we talk about it as losing money needlessly and unnecessarily. And we see it over and over and over again. I, I remember a, a situation where a relative, of, we were having a conversation, they were getting closer to retirement, or pardon me, they were, they were, they've been retired for a few years and collecting their Canada pension plan. And 
when I was when I was talking to her, I said, you "Don't you know?" And of course, I know the answer to this question. Andrew knows the answer to this question. Do you know whether or not? And it, and it, she claimed she was a she's a an accountant, and she claimed that you know same bank that that uh, Andrew worked for that they were taking care of everything for her. And I said, "So do you know for sure?" If you had, if you have, uh, are you that you're actually receiving a, a credit for uh, child rearing? And and she said, well, they took care of that for me. And I said, that's not the question. I said, are you sure that you're getting that? She said, well, I'm I'm getting everything that I'm entitled to. And I'm saying, well, are you sure? And this is what we do, and this is what Andrew has learned, that every person that comes in, we make sure that that's been taken care of. And that's the, this is just one example of what we're talking about here, that people are missing out on things. They're losing money. And if you believe it, it was taken care of, but it wasn't. And uh, even if it wasn't the bank, it could be your accountant. It could be anybody who's taking care of that for you. That's the question. And this is what I think what, what Andrew has come to, uh, to uh, appreciate about what we do at HSI. In fact, when we offered Andrew uh, ownership in HSI, he, shall I say you jumped at the opportunity? Is that a fair statement? It's a fair assessment there, Wes. <laughs> uh, so anyways, what we did is uh, I shared with her what she has to do to confirm whether or not she was credited for that and the form she needs to fill out. And she sent it over to a friend of hers and her friend did the same thing. And, uh, and I just get a bit of a chuckle out of it because they're, they're, I don't know if they're embarrassed or they're ashamed to say that, gee, that maybe we know something that they don't. And, uh, but her friend got something back right away and she was shocked and, and thanked uh, my, my relative for that. And I said, well, I didn't get a phone call. I didn't get an email saying, thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so it's, it's more than one thing here. It's not just, it's not just uh, um, the fact that, you know, you trusted somebody to do it, but you're, you're, you're trying to do it yourself to be, even make matters worse. You're trying to do it yourself and you're missing out on these things. And I just, I, 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 I guess I'm, I think that's part of the problem is I think that we were either embarrassed or we're ashamed or uh, we don't want to admit, or uh, we don't want to disclose to anybody, especially not to a relative that uh, I wasn't trying to solicit their business by any way, shape or form, because I don't, I'm not crazy about working for family um, in any case, but sometimes it works out and it works out. Okay. Uh, but in any case, I'm saying to the people that are listening here, if you're not a hundred percent sure that you're getting that kind of help, you got to check it out. You got to talk to people and make sure that you're getting, get somebody who's taking care of you and certainly call us, make us one of your calls, go out there and interview a few people, right? Maybe interview the bank. Andrew, is that a good idea? Go out and interview somebody at the bank, see what you're going to get. But one of your questions there, when you're going to the bank, are you going to be looking after me personally? And are you going to be looking after me for the next 20, 30 years? Mm -hmm. Because that's what we're going to get at HSI financial group. Okay. We're not going to get, you know, moved from one location to another because that's, that's good business for the bank. The bank doesn't want you to be getting too chummy chummy with, with your clients. Is that, that a fair, fair assessment as well? That's fair. Absolutely. You know, what are some of the other things that you've learned that you want, since you've been with us in comparison or anything else you want to add to fees? That's a good one to talk about. I like that one. Yeah, that's, I was just going there actually. Were you? Fees are obviously a hot topic, uh, especially when it comes uh-huh. to investing, um, how much you're paying, you know, and you know, you, you generally it's, you pay, you pay your fees. First thing they ask for, you know, what's, what kind of return am I going to get for, for those fees? Right. And, and you know what, the bank will probably do a decent job of investing your money and getting a decent, decent return on, on things like that. But what I've learned now is you should be getting more for that fee than a, even just a return, right? You should be getting that full, full meal deal, I guess, as we call it here. And, you know, it's your, all, everything's talking together. If you're a business owner, you're getting your, you know, succession plan or your shareholder agreement and all that stuff looked at, um, all included within that same fee. So it's just, it's just not the same, you know, it's potentially the same amount of money you're paying, but it's what you're getting for it. Mm-hmm. And it should go beyond the investment and whatever return you're getting for that. Mm-hmm. 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 And we know it's not happening. We, uh, when we have business folks come in that have their, 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 their corporations, we know that mm-hmm. nobody's looked at them. No. And we, they'll oftentimes say to us, well, who should be doing this for us? Our lawyer or accountant? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. Our financial advisor. Yes. 
Absolutely. That was another thing you shared with me is at the bank, they, they lead you to believe that they have all these connections and they're connected right with a bank. How does that work out? Mm-hmm. Well, there's the, the, the upfront, right? We have a, you know, the tax specialist, the, you know, estate specialist, the lawyer on call, the accountant on call, all this stuff, um, you know, and it might be there for your first meetings or two or whatever. Right. But it's the follow-up on it. Is that person, are those people still around helping you? Right. And mm-hmm. um, is, mm-hmm. are they connecting you to where you need to be connected so that everything's working together? Because having some, a poor tax plan can upset a, your you know, your investment strategy and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it is there, can be there, but it, is it, does it continue on, right? Does it continue on? And do you, are you eligible for it? So if you only bring that, in a, that, million, a million bucks, are you worthy of their attention? And that's the other thing. There is a, I don't know, range, I'll say of assets you have that is, it is ignored. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, if you have those millions of dollars, yeah, they'll provide that service for you, but it's the million dollars. Yeah. If you're a single million you yeah. may not get the attention. Right. And, yeah. 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 And, uh, I hear, yeah. And we yeah. know that we know that. And again, too, is the advisor really that connected with the professional, the other professional mm-hmm. and at HSI, we are very engaged with the other professionals. We selected mm-hmm. them and yeah. uh, they work with us. And if we're not all on the same page, we don't work together. And that what I mean by being all on the same page too, is that we're collaborating. We're not, we're not dictating. We're discussing and, and it's about how work, how we work together, because we're not always all right. And we're not always all wrong either. So it's a matter of having a great conversation. And of course, we're discussing that with the client before that event takes place, that this is who we're going to be bringing in to, 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 to talk, to speak to these things. And if there's some things that need to be addressed, that's what we're going to do. We don't ever undo good work though. We, I think we got to be clear on that. We don't ever mm-hmm. undo good work. So somebody's done good work in the past. We're not going to, we're not going to throw it under the bus just to make ourselves look good. That's, that's, that's not a professional, but, but for certain that if there's something that's not quite right, we're going to make sure that we address it. We bring it to your attention and discuss the ways to, to correct it. If it needs correcting or if nothing else, just to let you know that there's a possible liability here or, or it could blow up on you. The other thing that happens too, is that uh, one person sabotages the other, um, we don't want to make, we want to make sure that if you're not collaborating, that's what, that's exactly what's going to happen is that uh, the lawyer could sabotage the accountant's work. The accountant could sabotage the advisor's work, the financial advisor's work and so on and so forth. So if you don't have a good team, a good, strong team, you're still at a disadvantage. Um, so now I want, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my assets out of the bank. I like talking about this one. This is this, I get a lot of joy out of this one because we, <laughs> we have to, we have to explain to the client, Here's what's going to happen. Believe it or not, here's what's going to happen. And uh, so they go to the bank. Andrew, you're still at the bank. And they, they, they come up to you and they say, well, we want to move all of our money over to this HSI financial group. And what is the bank supposed to say at that particular moment in time? Well, I, I believe the first thing they'll say to you is you're going to pay more there. <laughs> it's going to be higher fees. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. all about the fees. Again. It's all about the fees. That's uh, That is the hook, line, and sinker, I guess you'll call it as, as their, their plan is, you know what? They don't know anything about that independent advisor or where that money is going. But the first thing you'll say, it doesn't matter on the employee. It could be a, um, a teller at the front, could be the manager. It's going to, they're going to say, are we going to pay more in fees there without even knowing, right? And, uh-huh. and they'll ask for a statement. And, but it kind of goes back to my, the, the point earlier is that, you know, what are you getting for that fee? And it's just exactly saying you're going to pay more, right? What are you getting there? Yeah, yeah. exactly. See, yeah. because you're brainwashed and that's what, unfortunately, that's the sign of the times. This is what everywhere you turn, it's about the fees. It's about the fees. Yeah. And you're, you know, like what Andrew is saying is that, what are you getting for, you're, basically the fees are pretty much on par. They're not that much different. Mm-hmm. They're not much different at all. But what are you getting wherever you are? So regardless if it's a bank or another institution, what are you getting? uh, for that fee that you're paying, are you getting full value for it? Are you getting a comprehensive wealth plan done for you and your family? Mm -hmm. And, and from what we can tell in most cases, and I say most cases over a very long period of time, you're not getting what you're paying for. There, there, you're, a lot of things are being left out and what's the, what, how do we accomplish this? How can we say to somebody with confidence that, there's not much that we're going to miss. What, what, what gives us that 
confidence to say something like that. What well, jumps yeah. I mean, I think it's just the, the history and, you know, what our clients say about us, you know, um, mm -hmm. we have clients on our, who our prospects reach out to and, mm -hmm. um, they, you know, talk to them over the phone and testify, you know, like what have we done for them mm -hmm. and that nothing truly gets overlooked. And I think kind of going back to what you said earlier was, you know, the banks pushing the online stuff, doing stuff yourself and all this and, and, and right. But mm -hmm. for us, it's how the client wants to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know what, and we'll be the ones calling the insurance companies and sitting on hold for them. We'll call CRA and sit on hold for them. And, um, I think those, just those little things too, you know, financial plan aside, those types of services are something people appreciate. Yeah. And, and changing uh, an address for them at Service change, Canada. hundred percent, right? Staying like on the, the phone yeah, for them yeah. there. And, and of course, of course, I think what's really, really, really important is that our checklists are, 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 are another hallmark of HSI financial group that that's how we can, uh, again, confidently say to people, what we do is repeatable. What we do mm -hmm. is with our checklists and they're, they're long and they're extensive checklists, like, uh, 23, mm -hmm. well, well, more, I think one of our checklists is 23 pages long and, and we use it for every client that walks in the door. So it's not, we don't do it by guessing by golly. We don't do it by well, we did this for this client yesterday. And so we'll do it for you today. No, it's done for this, every client, every time they walk in the door. Mm -hmm. So they know that that's been taken care of. So it's like flying the airplane, like we talk about, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never get into my plane to start it up without checking the checklist every, every step of the way. And when I would not take off, put the, push the throttles forward unless I had a flight plan. And the flight plan is telling me everything. And that's why in the book that I wrote, No, You Can, uses that parallel between the airplane, aviation, and financial planning. Uh, and I think people can kind of relate to that because the, the fuel in the airplane is your investments. The weather is the economy. It's very unpredictable. What are we dealing with right now? We just got a report in March that inflation in Canada for year over year has gone up 6.7%. To six point seven percent, I should say, it was five point three or five point four last month. This is getting out of hand, but that's that's the weather, right? And what do we do about? Well, there's lots of things, but is anybody doing that for you? Is the, are the people at the bank that you're trusting this with? Are they doing? Are you a hundred percent certain that they're doing all those things for you? Do they have a checklist? Uh, we'll show you all this when you come in to see us. Uh, and as Andrew's talked about it, we're, we're we work together as a team. So it's not just one person working on your file. We have several sets of eyes that are working on your file. Andrew is a very valuable um, member of our team because of his experience with the bank. It's, 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 it's hard to explain the value that he's brought to HSI Financial Group and our clients because now he can sit down with them and he can explain things to them about, you know, they get uh, frustrated with the bank. Well, Andrew can go in there and actually set their mind at ease. And that's a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. that's somewhat reassuring because peace of mind, you don't, we're not trying to eliminate the bank. Banks are trying to eliminate us, but we're not trying to eliminate the bank. The bank is there. They have some very useful tools there. They just get a little carried away with some of the things that they actually don't do and claim that they do, unfortunately. Um, and we, we'll work with the banks too. Uh, if they provide again too, that they'll work with us. Uh, so we try to create like, those relationships as well. We all just need to know where our place is and what the pecking order is. Is there anything that you would add to that? Uh, no, I mean, I think that's, um, anything that you can think of Patrice that, 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 cause you deal with the bank, you know what we're talking about here. Oh, I do indeed talk about having to do it all yourself or everything is through the ATM. Or Andrew, online. Yeah. Um, Andrew, mm -hmm. how did you, what was the, the point where you said, I made the right decision mm -hmm. when you came from the bank. I knew it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. A quick, good question there. I think I knew I made the right decision in day one, starting here, seeing the process, you know, like, you know, working, I work very closely with Devin and Blake, who you spoke with already and just seeing the process and steps they go through to get something prepared for a client meeting, and then seeing, you know, how we review it together and Wes comes in and, you know, put just final approval on things and we all review it together. Just seeing that and how everyone is on the same page here, like knew right away that this was a good move for me. And honestly been extremely happy working here in the first since the last for the last 18 months, for sure. It's been awesome. Have you said anything to those folks you left at the bank? 
<laughs> have I said anything to them? <laughs> like, man, man. You know what though? I'm, I've met, a, you know what? I have some good friends still from, from the bank and we hang out time to time and stuff. And, um, a lot of good people there. Like I said earlier in the podcast, they're, mm-hmm. they're just overworked. They have too many clients, um, to deal with for, for one person, to be honest, you know, I have mentioned, you know, a little bit of what we do here to some of them as well, but you know, it, I guess is what it is, I guess. Yeah. So when you go on to that, uh, the preparation, I think it's a, a point to be made too, is mm-hmm. so when you're preparing a, a, a progress meeting or some people call it a review meeting mm-hmm. for a client at HSI, how many hours do you typically, how many hours do, would you save between you and Devin and Blake that you put into that preparation just for that one review progress meeting? I would, I would say on average, some mm-hmm. little less, some higher, I guess. I'd probably say 30 hours. Mm-hmm. Just for a progress meeting. Now, how many hours do you, at the bank, how many hours do you think they spend on a progress meeting? Once again, I, I depends on the amount of money, which shouldn't uh-huh. be the case. Yeah. But I would, in my experience, maybe not even half, you know, even lower. Half an hour, a, it's an hour. A, it's putting an agenda together, you know, reviewing what investments they're in, those types of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and even in my experience, like I'm not just saying other bankers over there, but even mm-hmm. when I was at the bank, right? Mm-hmm. Even as a business banker, you know, you have so many meetings back to back to back to back. It's, you, you know what, I'm putting an agenda together to make sure I cover the key points, make sure all my stuff is compliant, you know, and make sure they're, you know, everything is in order basically, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a review meeting. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not everything. So and I did all, it. I did it might, there. All in all, what, maybe four or five hours or what, or even that much? Probably not even that much. Not even that and much. That's, so that's on my own experience. That's my own experience. That's me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, I don't think that there's any, any black curtains that here. You, I think you're pretty well versed in what went on there. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else you can think of that you'd like to challenge Andrew on Patrice? No, but I'm going to challenge you. Oh yeah. Well, just keep talking. <laughs> I got I to look for my paper here. Right. Uh, I know what you're going to ask me. Uh-huh. I don't have it handy. So, so you, I'm going to have to wing it. All right. I got it. I got it. Oh. Right. I thought I saw my whole life pass before me and it was only this little piece of paper. Because I'm going to say, Wes, how can listeners reach you, Andrew and the team? Patrice. They can contact us or me or Andrew or Blake or Devin by calling 403-269-4640, or they can call the toll-free number at 1-888-816-7020. They can email us, email us at clientcare at hsifinancial.com, or they can go ahead and look at our our website. They can do all kinds of good stuff on there at hsifinancial.com. And uh, yeah, we'd be, we just love to talk to people and help them out to help them make good financial decisions. So yeah, get in touch, listen to the podcast. Outstanding. Yeah. Listen to the podcast, follow the podcast. That way you're going to know when the latest show is ready and share it with friends and family, share it with colleagues too. Mm -hmm. You might get some really positive feedback here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The people that you care for, you care people that you care about, they deserve that. And like I said too earlier is that, you know what? I I, I wrote this in my book. I said, what you ought to do is go out and interview at, at, you know, minimum two. If you're, if you're thinking about making a change, interview at least two financial planners, maybe three, I would, I would do three, but that's time consuming too. Right. And maybe make it your bank and, and then call us later, call us last and make a comparison. You got it. You, you owe that to yourself. You deserve the best. Thank you for listening to your finances. No, you can the show that teaches you what you don't know about your finances. Have questions about topics covered during the show. Visit hsifinancial.com. Email us at clientcare at hsifinancial.com or give us a call at 403-269-4640 or 1-888-816-7020. Don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted does not represent any consumer or individual. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor, qualified financial planner, or qualified service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.